This is Neil Schneider for MTBS TV at CES 2014. Joining me to my left is Ari Hollander, co founder of First Hand Technology. Welcome to the program, Ari. Oh, thanks. Now, this CES, we've seen, we continue to see a fair bit of VR and augmented reality materials, but uh, you have actually a unique angle here. This is for health purposes. Can you elaborate a little bit as to what we have on display here? Sure. Well, uh, cutting to the chase, what this is, is a very high resolution immersive 3D display add on for retina class laptops like the MacBook Pro and a couple other there's some Dell laptops that would that would uh, potentially have enough pixels for this um, but the we built this device because there was a big need in uh, virtual reality to have a simple low cost way of delivering something that was is one of the applications of virtual reality that was uh, shown to be really amazingly useful and valuable, but hasn't gotten out of the lab because of the limitations in the in the technology and some other factors. So we built this thing to make a low cost, high performance uh, way of doing virtual reality pain control. Uh, it turns out that when you put someone in virtual reality, they feel less pain. And I'm not talking about the kind of pain that you have when you have a headache. I'm talking about burn victims burned over 70% of their body. Uh, some people have called it more effective than morphine. Now, I haven't seen the studies that directly compare that, but um, we did some studies, or actually the University of Washington did some studies uh, to test virtual reality. We've been working with some of the uh, inventors of uh, virtual reality analgesia for a long time uh, and uh, we recently uh, gave a set up to the University of Washington they tested it and found that it was effective uh, about 60 percent of this experimental subjects got 30 or more percent reduction in their pain uh, and as a comparison morphine is typically 25 percent so it's a profound effect um, now, when, when we're talking about a pain reduction, is it only uh, applicable when they're using the device, or is it something that the pain's gone for a while after using the device as well? Uh, there haven't been studies in terms of prolonged effects, but typically it's while you're looking at the, at the uh, display, which is really useful in a number of contexts, one of which is uh, wound care. And so when you are a burn victim and you have to get your wounds cleaned, I mean, this is going to be kind of gruesome stuff here, but, you know, it's excruciating. It is some of the most horrible things that people experience. Um, and any kind of relief is, is, you know, really needed. And it turns out that sometimes morphine isn't enough. Uh, and so what they have done in some contexts is actually use virtual reality and morphine uh, and to get an added effect. And you know, and that's been that's been shown to be effective as well. Uh, Any guesses, or do we maybe do we know why VR would have this benefit for pain reduction versus, let's say, 3D televisions or any other type of entertainment? Uh, well, the key is immersion. Um, it turns out that you need a wide field of view, uh, modulo a few other factors, but. Um, uh, so 3D TV doesn't quite cut it just because, you know, you could potentially stand really close to a, a 3D TV to get the wide field of view, um, but that's not practical in hospital rooms. It gets in the way. It's, you know, and it's, um, you know, and you need a pretty big TV in order to make it uh, functional. This thing has about an 85 degree field of view. Uh, so you are closer to the TV than the size of the TV, uh, <laughs> if that makes sense. Um, yeah. Now, is is a goal behind this entertainment? Is it a purpose to distract the user from their pain? Um, it is a distraction, in essence, but it's more fundamental than that. Um, it has to do with the way that pa pain is transmitted. Uh, it turns out that, that pain requires attention, and it requires sort of neurological bandwidth. And um, when you flood your sensory system with a virtual environment that surrounds you, it tends to take up that bandwidth. Um, and uh, and therefore you feel less pain. And you know this, a lot of the studies have been done with you know on a scale of one to ten, how much pain do you feel? But some of them were actually done, and that's not with this device. But some of them were actually done with um, a MRI, uh, and they, they they looked at the activity in the parts of the brain that are no, known to be associated with pain and watched it drop something like uh, you know thirty to ninety percent uh, when you uh, when you had someone immersed in a virtual environment.
Well, why don't we talk about the device itself? Um, how it, does it work? What, what does it do? Okay, well, this is a, we're taking advantage of the, the ultra high resolution displays that you've got on things like this MacBook Pro. Um, so it's, it's, you know, the, the screen is 2880 by 1800. So if you, it's a simple over under device. You divide that by two and you get a, you know, you lose some pixels on the side. Roughly we're getting about 2600 by 900 per eye. Uh, which, you know, that's, that's a lot of pixels, and that's a lot of acuity, and it's one of the best uh, VR displays I've ever seen after, you know, 18 years of work in the field, um, and actually 18 years, of, more than 18 years of work in the field, but, um, and, uh, and this one is going to be very, very low cost. I mean, there's no electronics other than the computer that you hopefully already own, and so it's, uh, you know, it's, it's good optics, good mirrors, good design, and that gives you a, a beautiful image uh, that's, you know, qu quite different. Now this is, I mean, it, obviously a lot of work went into it, um, but, but it looks very much a mechanical device, not so much a, an electronics device. Now, now we're seeing a lot of, you know, new products like, like you know, Oculus and Sony, and I'm sure there's other, you know, there's all kinds of stuff that, that that's coming out. Why would we use a model like this? Is there is there a reason why you chose this versus an electronic electronics based system? Why would someone work with something like this versus an electronics-based system? Um, well, there's, there's several answers to that, one of which is that head-mounted displays are not necessarily suited for pain control. It turns out that people who are in pain don't necessarily want to wear a lot of stuff on their head, especially if they have burned faces, things like that. Um, for other applications, uh, it is easier to sterilize than, than something like a head-mounted display. Um, and then there are the issues of sort of price performance. Uh, we, since we're not mounting it on the head, we don't need small image generators. And image, small image generators, they are expensive. They, you know, they tend to, they can come out in more limited runs. Whereas this is, you know, a, a consumer device uh, that's been sold in the millions and tested and and all that kind of thing. Um, if something goes wrong with your computer, you know where to take it. Um, whereas this part here, is, is very simple to construct. Uh, it'll be, you know, uh, it'll always be lower cost to put together something like this than it will be to put together something like this plus all of the display electronics and making it small and making it comfortable. Um, Okay, very good. I tried it out. Very clear image, of course. Um, so, the question though is, I mean, it, when I'm trying it out here, it's you know, it's an impromptu demo. I lean forward, I look through the lenses. Um, but in practice, for for someone who's suffering from chronic pain, how do you envision the final product looking? Well, I mean, th this of course is a prototype, uh, and but so we you know there are certain things that we'd streamline about that about that design, making it a little bit more curved and comfortable and things like that. Uh, in a hospital setting, uh, we typically mount it upside down uh, to get the keyboard up and out of your way, so you don't have this leaning over thing. Um, for quick demos, I usually have a stand. I didn't have it with me today that lifts it up at an angle so that the keyboard is much more out of your way. You don't really have to lean forward anymore, uh, and so it's more comfortable that way. Um, and um, but the the it's kind of funny when you get into the the implementation things and you find out well the, the arm to mount it in the hospital probably costs more than the, the device several times over and so it's uh, <laughs> it's it ends be bringing this stuff into the mechanical domain which is what we were setting out to do as opposed to making it exotic hardware. Now you you mentioned hospitals. I take it this could be a, a a big client base for you. Do you see this as like a standard practice to help, you know, cut out a portion of the pain medication to you know put out at hospitals? Where where do you see this going? Well, the first step is getting it into the hospitals, and thus far, I mean, virtual reality pain control is uh, something like sixteen years old as a field. Uh, I've seen survey papers that talked about 40 different controlled studies that were examining this thing. So it's been around for a while, but it's been stuck in the lab and in research hospitals um, because uh, it's been using traditional military head-mounted display technology, um, which is um, expensive, ergonomically problematic, and when it breaks, it, it costs ten thousand dollars to fix it and people don't really know how to use it properly it's just difficult to handle and uh, so making it easy to use is really the key aspect here we had some meetings with with uh, 
uh, like the head of pain medicine at the University of Washington and things like that, expecting to have to you know convince them that VR pain control was a good idea. Uh, and they said, no, no, we, we, we totally believe that it works. The issue is how do you make it practical? And so that's what we set out to do. So how are you making it practical? Well, first of all, we, we scaled the, the uh, price down. I mean, price has changed a lot in the last two years, mind you, with things like the Rift and, and so forth. Um, but we wanted to hit the, the part of the performance curve where we get much more brightness, much more color and all that kind of stuff, and much more resolution. And so, so we're still way ahead on that front. And uh, then, the once again, the the active component of this is a laptop that the hospitals already have infrastructure to maintain. They don't have to do anything exotic for it. Um, and, and, you know, we're working on making it out of more sterilizable materials and, more, and uh, things that are easier to clean and all those kinds of details, um, more comfortable. Uh, don't have to wear it, which a lot of that uh, HMD technology had problems. They started taking the HMD optics and image generators off of the helmet and mounting them in on an arm in some of the research. And so that's one of the things that, that uh, motivated this work here. Well, tell us about the content. What kind of content can we see this supporting? Well, just about anything that you, that you can set up in an over-under kind of configuration, you do need to offset the eyes a bit in order to uh, get it in the center of your uh, field of view for each eye. But, um, you know, we're working on ways to uh, um, get this to work with a range of game content, with a range of, uh, I've got, a, for example, I've got a, a prototype Unity plugin so that developers can, uh, can uh, just drop that in and be able to render properly for this thing. Um, uh, and I've been working on playing like Blu-ray 3D content. Uh, you can sort of play it out of the box, but it's not optimal. Um, I've been talking to the people who make some of the stereoscopic players for uh, uh, laptop or for uh, uh, PCs and, and, and uh, Macs and so forth, and talking about them to put in the, the, the correct adjustment to offset that. It's sort of in there now, but right now it does some undesirable things. And uh, they said, yes, they'll add it. So that's that's good news, and of course there's the there's the uh, drivers that you've been working on that, uh, that I wanted to talk to you about getting that that uh, application uh, up and running as well. So we're working on that too. Okay. Very good, very good. Um, is it important that the content be in stereoscopic 3D for this to effectively work? That's a that's a really good uh, insightful question. It turns out that stereo is not proven to be uh, important. Uh, they haven't really proven that it's not important either, but. Um, uh, so, but what is important is the immersive nature of the content, and you can't just do it on a television. Uh, it turns out that, it, that uh, a non-stereo, sort of a 2D television, they did test, and they found that that didn't work. Uh, and so, and I, 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 they left out a few details in that study in terms of not quite getting all the field of views nailed down, but, um, but it is important to be immersive. And so that's the key aspect here. And this, you know, this thing gives you, you know, the effective experience of sitting about, what was it, eight feet away from a 14-foot television or something like that. So it's, it's, it's big. And, it's, and, and the, the 3D, or not 3D, but the, the immersiveness of it does something to that content. Now, is this something that's readily available now? If I was a hospital that was dealing with pain management, how could they go about getting this, these units? Uh, we're doing short runs now. Uh, we are working toward doing a crowdfunding campaign. Uh, and the, the idea then would be to radically drop the cost, you know, down below like the Oculus Rift and things like that, uh, and, and get it out there in the hands of a lot of people so that we can get a lot of data on uh, how people experience it, whether it helps them in their home, for example, because it's you know not just for hospitals necessarily. Um, and eventually, I want to build it for iPads and, and tablets, high-resolution tablets, which have nearly the same number of pixels as this thing. Oh, they're not quite, but close. And so, excellent, excellent. Yeah. Well, th thank you so much for joining us. It's a good to see some something you know technologies like this used used for something very very positive. So I wish you the best of luck, and we'll keep an eye out for for your future crowd crowdfunding. Okay. We've been joined by Ari Hollander from First Hand Technology. This is Neil Schneider for MTBS TV at CES 2014. Thanks for watching.